Hello and welcome to the channel. We are going to place riba for the foundation works as you can see. We'll be placing ribas on footing, column and beam. Then we will use the propagate command to copy the riba to the other concrete elements. We can continue our project from where we left in the previous tutorial. To do so, let us start by creating some section views. Go to plan view. Let me delete this section view and define new views. Go to View tab, select Section, and we can now define some sections. Click somewhere here, up to somewhere here. Then, we can drag this grip back near the footing and click outside to exit the section command. Next, create another section. Start from this point here, up to somewhere here. Drag this grip upwards near the footing. Click outside or press escape to exit. Double click on the section head to open. Change the scale to 1 is to 25. Hide the section view by right clicking then hide in view by elements. Change the detail view to fine and wireframe for graphics display. Ensure that the grid lines extend below the footing. Go to plan view level 3 and double click on the other section view head to open. Change the scale to 1 is to 25. Find detail and wireframe for graphic display. Select on a grid line and extend it below the footing. Select on this box and drag it up. Before placing our ribbers, let us check the cover settings for the concrete elements. Go to plan view. In the structure tab, click on cover under reinforcement. Click on this box here to open the cover setting. Here, you can modify or add riba covers as per your requirements. I will press OK because the settings are fine for this project. Select on the footings, one by one, like this and this. Then drop the list above here and select on 50mm cover. Next, select on the columns one by one. Place a 40mm cover for the columns. Finally, select on the beams and place a 20mm cover for the beams then press escape. We can go back to section view to start placing our ribbers. In section 1 view, we can fix the level by lowering the scale or by selecting the level and click this dot. Move this back, then drag this up to somewhere here. We can start to place our ribbers. To do so, go to Structure tab, then click on Structural Ribber here. Go to Structure tab, then click on Structural Ribber under Reinforcement, then press OK. Ensure that the bar type is Y12. In the shape browser, scroll and choose shape code 21. Under placement plane, search to near cover reference, then move your mouse cursor closer to the bottom cover. Ensure that constraint placement is turned on here. Then we can place our ribber from bottom. Click to place ribber and top, then click to place ribber. Press escape to exit the ribber command. We can then select on the bars placed and change some dimensions from the properties palette. Scroll down till you find dimensions and let us change A to 160 and C to 160 then click on apply. With the two bars still selected, Scroll down in the Properties dialog to Identity Data. In Comments, type B1, T1. In Mac, type 04 and click on Apply, then OK. Ignore the duplicate mark warning. We can now change our ribber set layout from single to maximum spacing, then enter a value of 150 for our spacing.
we can go to 3D view and first let us change our graphics display option to wireframe. Let me save the project here. Here are our ribbers which we have placed as you can see on your screen. To view these bars unobscured, select on any ribber, then right click, all instances, then in entire project. Under properties dialog, scroll till you see view visibility states, you can turn on 3D, then click OK. If we now change to realistic display, you notice that the ribbers are visible. Go to section 1 view. Then select on the bottom bar, then go to Constraints and Edit Constraints. As you can see, all edges are constrained against the cover. Click on the green tick, then Finish. Select on the top bar, then go to Edit Constraint. Click on this dot along the bar to view the location of the constraint line then click on finish. Now, place ribbers going in the other direction by going to section 2 view. Here, place the other ribbers by clicking on ribber under reinforcement. Still with shape code 21, type Y12 and constraint placement turned on. Move the cursor to the bottom here and click then to the top and click then hit escape to exit the command. Select on the two bars then under properties box, scroll to dimensions and change A to 160 and C to 160. Scroll down to identity data and type in comments B2, T2 then click on apply. Type 04 as the mark value, then click on Apply, then OK. Confirm the constraint line by selecting on a ribber, then Edit Constraint. Click on this dot, then select the value 0, and type negative 12, then hit Enter. This will lock the bars on top of the bottom one. Click on Finish here. Select the top bar, then edit constraint. Click on this dot, then type negative 12, then click on finish. Go to section 1 view and you can see we only have one bar in each set. To fix this, select both bars, then under ribber set layout. Choose maximum spacing of 150, then click Enter. To view these bars, go to Section 1 view. As you can notice, our A and C values are now at 148. Change them in the Properties box for a clear schedule. Go to 3D view to view the bars. Select one bar. Then right click, select all instances, then in entire project. Go to view visibility states, then check on the box beside 3D view and click on OK. Now, all our bars are visible as you can see, and with this, we are done with the reinforcement of footing. Kindly support me by giving this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying this content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications. Go to section 1 view, select on column, then click on ribber above here. In the ribber shape browser, find shape code 12, then move the cursor to the column and click to place along the column face. As the bar is placed, Select on it and change the dimensions visually. First, for this bar, go to ribber set and select fixed number. Set the quantity to 3. Press escape then go to plan view level 3. Zoom with the middle mouse button. As you can see, we have 3 bars on the top side of the column in this view. 
one two three bars go to section one view this bar should go down to the footing bars this can be achieved by changing dimensions or editing in constraint which i'm going to show you type dl for detail line to know the distance click from here up to the bottom bar then go sideways then go up 12 millimeters then go to this side then go up to the column bar bottom reference here hit escape and select this detail line and copy the value to clipboard select on any detail line then right click select all instances visible in view then hit delete key now select the ribber and on constraint click on edit constraints select on the bottom bar handle toggle ribber cover constraint to the cover then type minus 316 then click on finish change the leg value by clicking on a and type 480 for the other side we can mirror this bar set to the other face of the column. Select on the bar, then go to mirror, pick axis. Then select on this grid line, then hit escape. Select on the bar, then go to edit constraints. Go to the bottom bar handle and constrain it to the cover, not to the bottom of the footing. Go to here, then click on finish. It is important to constrain our bars in order to propagate them without issues, as you will see. Go to section 2, then ribber. Go to the column and place a bar on this face. Select on the bar, then edit constraints. Select the bottom bar handle then change the value from 0 to minus 316 then click finish change the value of a to 480 then click enter go to plan view level 3 here we can align this bar to the center click on align then select here on the middle column reference then select the middle bar reference and now the bar is aligned perfectly on the column face go to section view to mirror the bar select the bar then select mirror pick axis and select this middle reference now we have placed a ribber on the other column face too we can go to 3d view to see the column ribbers select on any visible bar then right click select all instances in entire project go to the properties box and scroll to view visibility states then click on edit check the box beside 3d and click on ok we can now view our column bars and obscured in 3d view next we need to add stirrups or links to our column and to do so we can go to any section view our column bars are detailed up to the footing or base as you can see to add stirrups we can go to section one then click on ribber under structure tab in the ribber shape browser you can scroll till you find shape 63 Ensure that your placement plane is set to near cover reference. For our stirrups, change the ribber type to Y8 here in the properties box, then go to the column and place it by left clicking once, then press escape. Select on the bar, then go to ribber set. Change the layout to maximum spacing and give a spacing value of 200 millimeters.
go to section view 2. First, we need to turn on thin lines. Go to view tab, then activate thin lines from here. Now, select on the stirrups, then use this grip to lower the extent of the stirrup up to somewhere here, just below the beam cover. We can add a stirrup to the lower column by dragging this grip lower up to somewhere here where it snaps, then release your mouse button. Now we have placed our stirrups for the column. To enable this buzz to be visible in 3D, we need to check the 3D box in view visibility states, then check this box and press OK. Now, if we go to 3D view, you can see the stirrups unobscured. We can go to section view and edit its constraint. Select on the bar handle and constrain it below the beam cover. Select on the bar handle and constrain it below the beam cover. Go to the lower handle and constrain it to the footing cover then click on finish. With this, we have finished to detail the column and now we can place ribber on beams. Go to section view 2 then select on the section box then enlarge it by dragging it like this to extend the view up to somewhere here. Go to the structure tab then ribber. Change the bar type to Y12. In the shape browser, scroll to shape 21 and select it. Ensure that your placement plane is set to near cover and placement orientation is set to parallel to work plane. Move your cursor to the beam and place a bar at the bottom like this. Move to the top of the beam then place another bar then hit escape. Select both bars then change dimensions in the property box for A and C. Change to 150. Scroll to Identity Data in the Properties box and in Comments, type or select B1, T1 and give a mark value of 02 then click on Apply, then OK. To add the hook value, we can select on the bars then change the dimensions of A and C to 170 then click on Apply. Now, we have placed our beams bar. We can deactivate thin lines by going to view tab, then click on thin lines here. Now, our lines are thicker. We need to have two bars per set for the beam bars. Select both bars, then under ribber set, change layout to maximum spacing with a value of 150. Or, you can choose a fixed number of two in quantities. Go to structure tab then select ribber. Scroll to shape 63. If it is not well oriented, go to placement orientation then select parallel to cover and placement plane at near cover reference. Change the bar size to Y8, then move your cursor to the beam. Change the bar size to Y8, then move your cursor to the beam, then left click to place your bars and hit escape key. Select on any bar, then change the ribber set to maximum spacing with a value of 200. Select on the stirrups for the beam, then go to Edit Constraints. Select the left side handle and give a value of minus 40. 
then go to the right side handle and also give a value of negative 40 then click finish. We can go to 3D view to see our bars. Select on one column stir up and any Y12 bar then right click. Select all instances in entire project. Go to view visibility states in the properties box then edit. Check the 3D box and press OK. Now all our bars are visible as you can see. With this we have finished detailing our ribbers. Select on the footing with the ribbers then click here propagate ribber. Select on the other footings to copy the ribbers to them one by one then click on finish. All footings now have ribbers. Select on column then click on propagate ribber. Now click on the other columns without ribber to copy the ribber to them one by one then click finish. We can finish by selecting on the beam and propagate it to the other beams then click on finish. Thank you for watching this video. Give a thumbs up, subscribe and follow this amazing series in Revit 2024.